So I, uh, I, I discovered this guy yesterday, OC World Creation. Interesting, made a great video on Tesla. Uh, definitely worth a watch. I will post the link below because it's a good analyze of where Tesla is. But then at the end, he's like, but because we, could, we, we don't have like, um, for example, earnings um, uh, per share uh, that are stable or there are no, no real profits yet. Um, uh, it's, it's not really a value investment because we can't put really any value on the company. Uh, and therefore, it's a speculation. It not, it's not an investment. And uh, as a consequence, his conclusion is basically to not invest in it. My feelings are immediately like, hey, man, your loss. I've been there too, uh, being overly uh, critical uh, about uh, oppor certain opportunities and missing out. And the, the pain of missing out on an investment that you were very close on investing is as high as the pain of losing money on an investment. Huh? Knowing that you could have like tenfold your money, but you didn't, is as painful than losing half your money or 80% of your money. It's also extremely painful, but both are painful. So, so um, uh, rejecting everything, uh, um, um, is a, is a poor decision, especially if your rational arguments don't make sense. Huh? Um, yes, you can value Tesla. Huh? Uh, there are ways to value a fast growing company that does not make any profits uh, on the books because it does make uh, profits. Otherwise, it couldn't be expanding so fast. Um, so uh, that's one thing. I looked at some other videos of him. And I discovered that he made, for example, this video. Stocks are way overvalued, and here's why. And then he's um, uh, giving some rational arguments why stocks are overvalued. Uh, for example, he has here some kind of P-E ratio. And he says that now the P-E ratio is 30, and that, that, that's an all-time high, only twice in the uh, 1930s, it was exceeded and it always led to a serious, very big correction. Um, and he has another one here. I don't know what, what it is, but um, it also shows that we're at an all time high and we're ready for a correction. Now, my, my criticisms to these kind of indicators are that you have to be very careful with inflation numbers. Uh, they, they may really, uh, and also with the change, like m many statistics are just wrong. Huh? Uh, I haven't dived into this PE ratio uh, indicator here, huh? but I'm sure if I dig into it, I will discover things that show that this indicator is not reliable anymore uh, over time, but I don't have the arguments for it. I'll leave that work to you if you want. And the same for his other indicator. Huh? Um, I'm sure if I dig into it, um, total market cap over GDP is the other indicator that I will find uh, things that don't, um, that this kind of indicator is not very helpful in uh, deciding where the stock market will go to. But I don't have the rational arguments here. And this all requires work. Um, I put my work into other indicators that show to me clearly that, and, and I, I indicates that I find much more reliable than some kind of uh, Schiller price to earnings ratio. Um, of course, PE ratios are important, but be very careful. Uh, like for example, the PE ratios were very high at the bottom of the of the bear market uh, after the crash in 2008. Stock market collapsed with 50% and the PE ratio skyrocketed. So that looks like a ba very bad investment to invest in the stock market as a, as a PE of 100 or so. But uh, actually it was a very good investment. The stock market went up a lot since 20, 2009. So, um, um, uh, probably the same with this kind of index, but I'm not familiar with it. 
What I do know, uh, I studied uh, the historical returns. And uh, these are um, historical returns uh, of the world stock market versus the US dollar since 1928. And uh, today, over the last 10 years, we have a 9% return. Is that high? No. Because, for example, in 1989, it was 19% per year for 10 years in a row, huh? on average. Um, in 1958, it was 20% for 10 years in a row. Huh? So, a 9% is actually exactly the average since 1928, with also 9%. So today, the average return over the past 10 years is the same as the average return of the stock market since 1928. So how can how can stocks be overvalued if the uh, returns are average compared to its historical uh, performance? Then the stock market is just averagely valued. Huh? Uh, it's as simple as that. Huh? Um, but you can also look at what's the uptrend or downtrend. Huh? That's very important, of course. Yes, stocks may be averagely valued today, but is it in an uptrend or downtrend? Because if it's in a downtrend, it's not going to be good in the future. But if it's an uptrend, it's going to be very good in the future. So what's happening? Well, we're in a clear uptrend. Average returns 10 years ago were 0% the last 10 years. They were in 0% in US dollars, but US dollar has a high inflation rate of 6% per year, 5.8%. These numbers are up to interpretation. Eh? We, you can discuss about that. Some people will say, what, are you crazy? 6% uh, is way too high. Real inflation is only 2%. Uh, uh, that's what the government says. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so maybe like a reasonable man will say, okay, I think it's too high. It's maybe like 4%, but it's not 6%. Okay, fine. Deduct only 4% then. Huh? But if you have 0% return, in US dollars, you have to deduct 4%. That means it's, you lost 4% per year for 10 years here. Huh? I think you lost 6% per year for 10 years. Huh? Because these inflation numbers I have, 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 have checked with, uh, with real prices of not only goods and services and commodities. Yes, you have to look at that. But that's the only thing the government is looking at. But you also have to look at asset prices. Asset prices also increase with inflation of real estate, stocks, gold, uh, uh, all these things also go up with inflation. Uh, so if you look at how much uh, can I buy with my money, you have to look at all uh, uh, commodities, uh, um, uh, services, products, and also assets uh, uh, like art and, 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 and uh, collector items. If you include everything, yes, you will see that it actually goes up with almost 6% per year, uh, a basket of all these uh, uh, items and uh, 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 but I don't take it from there I think it's just from what the government is sharing that they actually print the amount of US dollars that they print per year uh, they don't make a secret about that and I give them uh, 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 I deduct even 2% and, and I give that to them uh, uh, because the economy is growing at 2% so if you print every year 2% more prices will not go up because everything becomes cheaper 2% per year so yeah, you print two percent more, and and you 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 circulate it, you spend it in the economy. There is two percent more money in circulation. Prices should go up with two percent, but there are also every year two percent more goods, services, and assets in the economy, and so the amount of money goes up at the same rate as the amount of goods and services, uh, and so the, the the price level will stay the same. So that I deduct that, huh? but even if you deduct that, uh, you still have a net. Uh, how much they print is. Actually, it's not a 5.8, it's 7.8% it's per year is what the Fed prints. You deduct 2%, you're at 6%. It's, it's exactly also how much you will see prices uh, of goods and services go up. I also made a video of that with price histories of 30 years uh, and more uh, of several items that show this, that it is 5% uh, at least. But um, this is the inflation uh, discussion. Uh, and uh, and uh, in my opinion, you can deduct 6% per year here. So what are the real returns of stocks if you have 9% in US dollar terms? 
it's only 3% the real return. And then you have not deducted costs for transaction fees to buy those stocks, management fees for those ETFs that you're investing in, uh, 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 or stock indexes, as well as taxes. Huh? In many countries, they charge even taxes on top of that. And it's not taxes based on the 3% huh? after inflation. It's taxes based on the 9% that you made huh? when you sell a stock. And then they deduct another 30% of that. Like real returns of stocks past 10 years are only 3%. And that's before all the expenses. And so people basically also did not make money in stocks the past 10 years, but they also didn't lose money. Huh? The past, uh, but 10, 10 years ago, in 2008, people had lost a fortune in stocks for 10 years in a row on average. And that's also before expenses. Huh? So, so, so sometimes stock markets are terrible investments. And that's also true for gold, sometimes terrible investments and sometimes great investments. Eh? Um, but so important to look at the trend uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, the point of my channel is to share how I make money uh, and what insights I use to make my decisions and, uh, and money by passive investing. And that means, like Mark Far Farber learned me 20 years ago, you only need to make one right decision every 10 years and that's it. Uh, and, and you stick to that decision for 10 years uh, and you'll make good money. But the big challenge is which is the right boat, which is the right train for the next 10 years. That's very difficult right? because people are just the majority is absolutely wrong about that. And also the majority of, of experts you will see on TV or on YouTube uh, or on Twitter, uh, majority of experts there are also wrong. So uh, only 20% makes money in the market, 80% loses. And that's also true for the experts, so-called experts, huh? because experts are nominated by the people and the people prefer to see experts that talk their book, the, the same book that they believe in. Huh? So experts are selected by the people huh? um, and, uh, and therefore 80% of the experts are also wrong. So uh, you have to look at the rational arguments that they are giving. Huh? And even though it's admirable that this guy, for example, at least gives you some rational arguments, it's very good. Huh? Uh, you can dig into that and, and discover why they are wrong. Huh? Uh, that's homework for you to do. Uh, but um, I can give you my uh, rational arguments why I think uh, the stock market is heading up. And these are the arguments. Huh? So uh, <clears throat> stocks, people are not euphoric about stocks today because the returns have not been exceptional. Huh? Uh, people are, are actually in doubt about the stock market. Yes, it just went up the past 10 years. Yes, yes. But they are afraid for a new crisis coming. So uh, that's also typical when you're in, uh, in the midst of a bull market that people are still uh, not uh, convinced. Some are, some are not. Huh? Uh, and, 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 and there's certainly no euphoric temperament. And this is all directly related to the past returns, how people feel about an investment. Um, so, uh, yeah. Uh, so what is the potential for the stock market um, if you deduct, deduct real inflation? Well, on average, you can only expect about 3% per year uh, since 1928. Uh, that has been the real returns, 3% per year of stocks before expenses. But uh, that's good times and bad times combined. Sometimes you can have like 10% per year uh, after, uh, sorry, before expenses, but after inflation. And that's, of course, very good huh? because that's after inflation. You make actually 16% per year for 10 years. But after inflation, it's still 10% per year. You do that for 10 years, you doubled your purchasing power of your money just by basically having a stock index fund for 10 years. Uh, that, 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 that's great. Uh, and so um, th this is a potential that you can have these 10 years in a row, uh, such a returns. That's amazing. But it's only every 30 years or so. The, the last time I was here in the early 90s. The, the time before that was in the middle 50s, in the early golden 60s. That's like 
a period and it's not there it's actually 10 years before that that you need to start to invest to, to have this return so when should you have started investing in the stock market um 10 years before that uh so uh, not at the end uh not in the 90s uh, but in the 80s uh, you should have started investing here in the stock market and that's right where the returns are very bad uh, for the part the 10 years before that negative returns that's when you need to start investing in the stock market uh but that's when there was a turnaround hmm? mm, so uh, yeah that's the same today huh? um negative negative returns uh for the past 10 years but also here it's been like for the past 10 years after inflation it's been bad and um yeah uh, very likely uh, we are heading uh, like up down up down up this cycle is not finished it's just we're just halfway very likely we go up again to 10% returns after inflation. That means about 16% returns before inflation. On average, the last 10 years we're at 9%. Eh? So that's very equal to being, for example, here in the early 80s. Average returns were 9%. After inflation, 3%. What happened after that? Eh? Returns of stock market indexes were 5% one year, 50% the next, 40% the next, 10% the next, 20% the next, 20% the next. Amazing returns. And that's how you get to an average return of almost 20% per year the last 10 years. After inflation, 12%. That's more, most likely to happen here. And for gold, it's the inverse. Gold is inversely correlated. So it's the inverse. It looks very, very bad for gold. The past 10 years, the returns were 4%, uh, but uh, after inflation, you lost 2% the past 10 years, but this is just the start. Uh, look, you can lose about 10% per year after inflation with gold. Um, so uh, for gold, it's like, okay, uh, down here, up, down, up. We're in a downtrend. We're probably gonna bottom here at minus 10%, like we did before, or minus 6% per year. No, minus 8% per year. It always gets worse with gold. That's also a real problem. Huh? Uh, gold over time is losing purchasing power because its importance is going down the econ in the economy. It's used less and less as money. So you reach new lows. Every bear cycle for gold, you reach new lows. And every bull cycle of gold is less high. Huh? The bull cycle in the 70s went to a, a return after inflation of 20 percent that's incredible for 10 years uh but the the, the recent bull cycle of gold only gave you 10 percent returns for 10 years in a row after inflation still very good the same as what stocks can give you but you can see it's a lot less than the previous uh cycle um and the losses in go up like the losses in in the 50s for gold was you lost about 8% after inflation per year for 10 years in a row. And that was bad, but it got even worse in the 90s. It became like 10% per year for 10 years in a row. So the next bear market will likely be like 12 or 13% that you lost per year after inflation for 10 years in a row. And so that's the low. We're only at minus 2%. This will go up to minus 12%. Uh, so what kind of returns can you expect then? Well, let's look back in history. When were, when were, when did we, let, we can look right here, for example. There was also a down cycle. Let's say we're right here now at minus 2%. That was in the middle of the 80s. Let's go to the middle of the 80s. That's about here, for example, or here. Um, yeah uh, still good returns but here another year of 20 percent returns so average returns are here now you lost one percent per year what happens the years after oh actually good years you have six percent twenty percent twenty four percent great years you're thinking whoa wow the bull is back eh, of the 70s here eh? the 70s was gold golden era for gold investors so like yeah you have some bad years we just had that 
but then you have a rebound and oh going well i've been making money so they invest again more in gold what happens after minus 16 minus 2 minus 2 minus 10 minus 16 as four years of losses uh, in U.S. dollars terms, after inflation, you can add six, uh, more to this. Huh? You didn't lose 16%. You lost, after inflation, uh, 25% in one year. Here you lose not 2%, you lose 8%, almost 10%. Oh, here you lose almost 10% of your purchasing power again. Here you lose 15% of your purchasing power. And here you lose another 10% of your purchasing power. Those are the years after. So, yes, we can have a positive year of, for gold and even two, but... The trend is downwards, and for the next 10 years, this looks very bad. So it's very risky to try to play a bounce, for example, for gold, because you're not sure you're going to get that. You can go straight to this, these, these, these numbers too, or like this can be missed. Uh, and we just had actually two good years, uh, 16 and 17 for gold. Uh, even though it's in a down cycle so actually we might be now ready for a five years negative cycle um and also very interesting uh, always important but people always talk about interest rates and 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 the fat and, and it's going to depend uh, what the fed is going to decide what the economy will do this is not true uh, the fed only follows uh, market uh, based set interest rates it is the market that set interest rates of course, government can manipulate it a lot. They print a lot of money. And what do they do with that money every day? They buy bonds, government bonds. And of course, that lowers the interest rates of government bonds. And they do this more and more over time. But this is nothing new. Like the government has for uh, since uh, the, we started tracking this, uh, has always printed a lot of money. Uh, so this is a, a quite constant uh, factor uh, that they've been printing money. Huh? Uh, here, for example, in the 30s, uh, look what they printed per year. 16% uh, per year. Uh, this is the war starting here. So that's another excuse to print more money. 16% huh? uh, per year for 10 years they've been printing. But this was the Great Depression. Also a good excuse to print money. Uh, so, uh, But it was actually uh, only 6% per year here. So, so, so nothing new here and they print money but even and they always print money uh, but sometimes more sometimes less this is an interesting uh, cycle actually uh, that you see that indeed um, uh, in good times they do print a lot less huh? um, and this is probably where we're heading to now uh, as you can see here, for example the government did not print money for the past 10 years they actually reduced the money supply for two percent per year the past 10 years here in the 60s, the golden 60s. And when times were good, actually they, 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 they start to like stop printing money. And this is what very likely will happen again here. People like these, these, these bull, uh, gold bulls and, and hyperinflationists, they say like, look at the amount of money that the government printed. Like this will all come in the, into the economy and we will get hyperinflation. But that's not correct. First of all, it already came in the economy. And money that's printed comes in the economy immediately yeah, because it's they buy government bonds with it. And what does the government do with the money that they receive? The same day they spend it on stuff, the same day. The government does not have a savings account where they uh, like uh, save all the money that they printed, uh, save all the money that they got from selling government bonds. No, they, they, they spend it immediately. Yeah. Um, so uh, all the money that's printed... Uh, the, 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 the Fed gets uh, government bonds, gets paper, but uh, the, 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 the government itself gets real money that they spent on real people, and that was real, real people spend it in the real economy. Uh, so, uh, it's already in the economy. Uh, the question is, will they print more or less? And typically, in good times, they print less, and they even reduce the amount of money circulation. This is just how it went in the past, so very likely that's how it's going to go in the future. And actually, they've been doing this Exactly that, the past four years. They did not print money. The Fed, they actually reduced the money supply four years in a row. Thanks to that, the average uh, uh, money printed the past 10 years is only 9%, but it used to be 18% and 12%. It's going down now. So we're in a down cycle of money printing. And um, also very interesting is to see... Uh, uh, 
but but this this what's very interesting is that and that's why i take average inflation always the same here i just take whatever they print in total because what you can see is that price increases of goods and services and assets is not like going up with the amount of money that the government is printing uh, because price prices of goods and services and assets are primarily set by market demand market demand of supply huh? supply and demand huh? for example commodities they sometimes go up a lot in price together with the gold cycle here is a commodity cycle that's primarily because of a shortage of commodities huh? that's why they go up and 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 and, and so uh, in the other way uh, like when there are good times that means when commodities goes down in price that's primarily because there is an oversupply of commodities and you and typically then the inverse happens stocks go up and real estate go up a lot in the in those uh, eras but they go up not because of money printing they go primarily up because of a shortage also a demand demand and supply uh, imbalance uh, where uh, stocks and real estate start to have positive returns again because the economy is going well because commodities go down in price uh, and so people want to uh, in, own more companies start more companies want because the, you can make profits with them but they also want to own more real estate because real estate after inflation actually is going up because uh, people are expanding people want to build more homes they are more wealthy uh, so the price of of uh, land uh, uh, goes up uh, land where you're allowed to uh, build uh, homes goes up because there is a shortage uh, so 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 it's always something that's uh, going up and something that's going down but over that you can just put the layer of inflation which is on average, 6% per year that they print, you know, 8%, but you deduct, deduct 2% for growth. Uh, it's about 6% per year. And indeed, that's the how, how much prices on average goes up. But that means in this time, for example, it's not commodities. It's actually uh, real estate. And it goes up with a lot more than 6%. Um, uh, whereas commodities go down. But the average is like 6 8%. Um, so, so... That's the situation. And then there's the interest rates also very important eh? because people think that I do take the Fed interest rate here, but here uh, also interest rates are not set by the government or the Fed. They are followed by them. Eh? And so they are set, set by market demand and supply for money. Uh, and if people uh, 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 typically do during crisis money, um, uh, People are, are happy with a very low interest rate for their money because they want safety. So they prefer to put the money with government bonds or with uh, big company bonds. And they prefer not to have stocks, but bonds because they are afraid of losing money. And so there's a lot of competition to have these assets. And so they push interest rates down for these so perceived safe assets. That's how interest rates are set by the market. But then the Fed follows that and then they have this kind of official interest rate but this just follows market rates and so what you see is that this cycle is actually much longer than than the the the, the, the stock commodity stock commodity cycle it actually goes over two cycles it's it's one stock one commodity cycle one stock one commodity cycle that's the interest rate cycle it's it laps two cycles it laps the total cycle of com, uh, com, uh, of stock plus commodity cycle and what you see is that you have one cycle it goes up, one cycle it goes down. One cycle interest rates go up, one cycle interest rates go down. That's what we see here in the past. So very likely it will continue in the future and the next cycle of first stocks that we can expect. And after that commodities that we can expect, this whole cycle will be like this cycle where interest rates bottom here at minus 5% after inflation here too, but then go up and after inflation, you're going to end up making at the end of the cycle, that's only in like 40, 50 years interest rates. We can expect them to be very high again at 10% and after inflation, you make 5% or so. That's also very interesting because people are, oh, if, 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 if the Fed raises interest rates, uh, uh, the economy will be in a slum. That's not how it works. 
the interest rates will go up if the economy improves because people don't want to uh, invest their money anymore in government bonds or in uh, a, a, a big company uh, blue ship um, uh, bonds they actually want to see growth uh, of their money because they feel more optimistic again because the stock market has been going up and so they start to want to take more risk and so they they want to start investing also in stocks or they want to invest in uh, art or uh, in uh, yeah things that go up in value uh, so so the, the risk uh, goes on and 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 and, and the amount uh, of money available to buy all these bonds goes down and so they have to raise their interest rate to attract enough money and that's how interest rates go up and so it goes hand in hand if indeed we are in a stock cycle and 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 and, and, and that means that we're in a commodity bear cycle if that's true, which is very likely true, which, because we just had a commodity bull cycle, a lot of commodities, uh, a new production has come online for all commodities, farm uh, commodities, uh, like you remember the biofuel uh, boom, uh, like farmers have increased a lot their production of, of crops, but also oil uh, producers have a lot increased their production, <clears throat> uranium uh, miners also, uh, like, if you look at the production statistics, they are up a lot of all these commodities, uh, iron, uh, gold too. Uh, uh, so everything is up a lot thanks to the recent commodity boom. Uh, and that causes a glut in supply that causes commodities to collapse in price, which we saw the past five years, uh, past 10 years. Uh, but that will likely last a lot longer. And this will also um, boost stocks. Uh, in valuations because it goes better and better with the economy and due to that uh, uh, money uh, shifts from bonds to stocks and due to that interest rates go up <laughs> that's how it works um, so i hope you enjoyed the video guys and uh, i hope it helps you to make the right investment decisions and please share my video it's so important for the people that follow your work uh, or your friends or the people you care about uh, and they are busy with this kind of stuff. This is very important for them to know how it all works because otherwise you make capital, real capital mistakes of allocating your capital to sectors that don't need it. And like for example, investing in gold today, what, what do you do? You push up the price of gold. So that means you push up the price of uh, the production of gold. And is that needed? No, uh, because there is more than enough gold. There is a, a glut in gold. Look at the production numbers, look at the prices. Um, uh, 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 prices are declining because there is too much gold available for the demand uh, that there is for gold. Huh? So you do, you, you invest in gold, it means you increase the production of gold. It means you're wasting money because we don't need more gold. Huh? Um, and the inverse is true for stocks. You invest in stocks today, um, yeah, uh, you, you, you basically increase the amount of um, the value of stocks. And so um, you, 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 uh, you help like what you're saying to the economy is that we need more companies uh, because um, times are good. Uh, there's a lot of uh, profits to be made. There's a lot of needs to be met. People do want more products. They do want more services. Uh, and it's time to start building that. That's what you do when you buy uh, stocks. And um, that's also what's necessary. 